Good afternoon, folks. Uh, my name is Alex, and this is Shalai Baran. And in this episode, we're doing a product review, or rather, I'm doing a product review of. Ooh, where's my light? There we go. Uh, doing a product review on two drums, not one. And it was the one I talked to, I talked about earlier. Today, we're talking about the Christian Hedvig Shack RWE, Rolf Vogel's edition. And for those of you, this is this drum comes in two different versions. It comes in a 16 by 6 and a 15, I think 15.5 or 15 by 6. The 15 by 6 incorporates the change head system because the change head system is 15. So, skin on this is the uh, lamb bag, uh, and it's uh, quite a pretty much medium sized drum, very deep frame, pretty much sits in. The long line of drums now that are made that are in and around the five to six inches deep and around you know the, the 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 15 to 16 inch size so that's number one number two is this this is a metloff drum and it uses uh the standard goat skins that's supplied from the website information um this one here is also 16 inches but it is not six inches deep it is four inches deep and I want to give a shout out and thanks to Andy Inns um, who put a bunch of his drums up on the bar and buy and sell on Facebook I was able to snatch this up from him um, so this is a used drum but heck so is my RWE I've had it for a year about a year and a half almost two years now so used drum uh, break-in uh, review I guess you could call it now uh, tuning systems on these drums are more or less the same type. They are screw types. They have star heads. This one has the Forkner tuning system. The other one has Christian Hedvig Shack's tuning system. The big difference between the two, and this is sort of where the review is gonna be a little different, and I have to admit, some of the review is not gonna be completely even. And that's mainly because the skins are different. You know, this is the goat, like, the, off, the regular goat skin from the Metloff website, you can find the info, and I will put the info below in the uh, description. Versus the Lambeg skin, which is skin taken off the Lambeg drums in Northern Ireland. So, it also has a tuning system. Each of them have an eight-point tuning system. But really, really quick, as far as the frame information goes, this is veneered fiddle bottom maple stained in red. I don't know what the wood is on this, and it is black paint. So one is very bling, one is very minimalistic. Both are very beautiful. So next thing about the tuning systems themselves. Inside the tuning rim, so first of all on the Matloff, and my apologies if you can't see it really well, the ring is the first thing and I think the most important thing in the review between these two drums. Inside, between the actual main section before it starts to taper off to on the, on the, on the tuning ring, it tapers off less on the Metloff. It versus the inside of the Hedvig Shack drum which uses a compressor tuning ring system. Now on the website, Christian Hevichek and Rolf Vogels mentioned that the compressor tuning system was specifically designed to achieve certain particular sounds. And the compressor, what the compressor does is that it helps control, again, some of the overtones as well as the taping, but in conjunction between the two, the teamwork between the two, the overtones are cut way, way down. So you can get this drum to be very, very neat very very easily controllable. So what is actually really happening? Well that means that there's less extra vibration between the bearing edge and the actual skin. This means that if you want to make quick changes up and down the drum you have a lot more immediate control in the RWE. You know, The Lambeg skin here has been beaten in so it's pretty creamy smooth now. It's gonna get better and better as it gets older but it still has that hard attack. And that's the same thing on this, which actually has a decently hard attack. 
But the sound difference in the resonance is that in the tuning ring in here, the tuning ring actually has more sustain. So what you end up getting are longer stretches of tone, but you have to work a little harder to get, actually a fair bit harder, to get yourself nicely situated so you can hit the baseline tones cleanly without hearing dissonant sounds. So that is one of the biggest differences between two drums. Am I gonna say that they are similar? Of course they're similar. They have similar tuning systems. They have similar goals in mind when I play them in top end style. But when it comes down to the actual sounds, they're a little bit different. Each one has its positives and each one has its negatives. Um, and each one is incredibly well made. So if you decide to pick either one down the road, you're gonna be a winner. So, so let's get to it really quickly. First up, Metloff. The Metloff drum. So, what do I like about it? Well, the ideal width for me is actually five inches. So the four just means that it's super easy to control the attack of the drum angle, as well as control my sticking angle. Very, very simple. Negative side, I have a lot of space between the pit of my arm and the side of the drum, which means I don't have as strong a grip on it, which means if I'm trying to do certain, cer uh, certain um, sticking techniques, it can be a little bit difficult because it's slapping around on the inside, so I have to be pretty careful. Also, it's a much lighter drum than the RWE which means if I do end up getting a little sweaty and I start to stick, I'm gonna start lifting this drum up and down. A five inch frame on me doesn't do that. The four inch frame is actually providing that extra inch for the drum to flop around a bit. I have yet to actually find a way to keep it from doing that. So I have to start changing my playing style a little bit when I play it. What's the sound like? Well, open tone. Lots of sustain. And then controlling the tone, I find it's easier to start right around sort of the two-third section of the two-third section ring on the skin. And for top end playing. Not too bad. I am using a double-ended tipper, but it's just to give you some of the bass. That extra flap in the skin allows this thing to slide really easily and maintain, unlike the compressor tuner, which cuts it a bit short, it gives you that option of taking the tone a little bit longer of a run. Negative side is that if you screw it up, it's much more obvious. If you like bundle tippers, this drum is fantastic for bundle tippers. Where does this drum have its strongest suit for sound? It's not the bottom end. The bass is cut a little bit out mainly because of the depth of the drum in my opinion, but this drum shines in the high to mid frequencies. Really, really shines in the high to mid frequencies. And if you're someone who likes to play the very thin tippers in a very sort of top end sort of way, it has what I call a knock knock sound. That means it's not a crack, it doesn't go like that when you're playing the pops. But it also doesn't go pfft, where you don't have enough distance and the skin just isn't, like it, it, it's, 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 it's flapping too much and it goes pfft, like that, there's just nothing there. This skin has a wonderful It 
has a sound that just has a knock knock, which is a clean, somewhat compressed, but it's got the sustain there too, so it resonates through the skin and makes sure that it shoots out the back beautifully. By the way, sound projection on this drum is like most of these types, straight out and straight back. So not much going on in the dead zone. Same thing with the RWE, has the same issue of dead zone, straight out and straight back. So this thing has a beautiful knock knock sound. It's so simple, miking it is the easiest thing in the world because it doesn't want to make a destructive cracking ear piercing sound. It just goes knock and then has this beautiful in between sort of resonance that makes sure that the, your, 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 your pops are crisp and highly controllable. Point number two, the mid-range tone. So this would be like your tom-tom sound. The, the, the mid-range tom sound is where this drum also shines even more because it has the tuning ring which allows you the extra flap and extra sustain, which means you can get in there and start pushing with your hand on the back just to get in, or however it is you do it. And you can get some big rolls, brr, 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 sort of a sound. You can hear it, you can hear the tone curve. Ding, ding, ding. It's sort of like hitting a tennis ball back and forth. Ding, 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 ding. And then a big round high sustain bottom end. In a way, this is almost the opposite in some ways to the RWE, which I will get to right now. The, the RWE by comparison is a heavier drum, it's got a heavier feel. Benefits of this is that it is very stable. It sits on your lap. It doesn't want to move. You can roll it pretty easily. It looks like a totally pimped out drum. It's pretty, pretty, right? It's a bit of a supermodel looking drum. And it has a very good skin on it. Nice, medium thick, not too thin, not too heavy. It has a great sound, but it doesn't have quite the sustain. And that's where the benefit of changing the tone, and then by the way, as far as flat playing, it's great. If you're a person who likes versatility in playing many different sounds, the RWB with a club and tipper is one of the most versatile drums I've ever played, so you may want to look into that and ask the maker some questions about it. Bundle tippers. You get a very, very neat, almost zero chance, almost zero chance, unless you are playing just with your finger, an almost zero chance of having flap and your tone falling out of what it should sound like. It is such a neat, simple, and easy to use system. And especially, and I just, I wanna again highlight this, the thickness of the skin is making it easy as well, but the secret is that compressor tuning ring. It just makes it so much easier to make neat, quick changes in how you're playing. But what is the penalty of this? The penalty of that is the Tom Tom mid-range. Now this drum has very good mid-range and excellent bass because it's deeper and the skin's a bit heavier. But the mid-range for the highs it's got a little bit more of a sharper tone. It has a very square bottom, so it doesn't have the extra vibration to it. It's just bong, it's just dong right there. You're done, bong, that's it. That's it. Has like about half a second's worth of sustain versus the second and a half sitting on the Metloff. So what does this do to your tom-tom sound? 
shortens it considerably, it gives you about half as much length. You just don't have that same sound. It's very, very neat. And for bundle tippers, it's, I'd say, a little bit superior. But for a skinny tipper, if you're someone who likes to do some curvaceous tom-tom action, you're not going to get that doom, doom, doom sort of sound. You're going to get a very do, do, do. Very quick, very neat, very clean, but not so curvaceous. You're going to get something that is easier to control, but you're not going to get something that's going to allow itself to be as malleable, as manipulated as on the Metloff drum. Now, keep in mind, I don't know if that Metloff drum was custom made or not. I'm assuming it was. You know, I, I, I think pretty much he makes only custom drums, Mr. Forkner. And this is a standard production model. So this does not change. This is forever and a day going to be made that way until Christian and Rolf decide to change some aspect of the drum for whatever reason. So keep that in mind when you're listening to this review. I am not saying one drum is better than the other. I'm trying to help you point, I'm trying to point out differences in the actual drums constructions and sound metrics so that if there's a particular sound you like, you may be better off going with something like this, which is incredibly versatile or if you want something very, very specific, that drum right there. And there's a reason why I picked up the Matloff, and there's a reason why I picked up this. This, I wanted something that was gonna be able to do a broad spectrum of sound, and I wanted something that was quick and easy to mic because I was gonna be recording with it. Well, this definitely gets recorded, and it always makes its way toward a flock kill alive. The Matloff I chose specifically for the tone, and because I had done my research enough on the instrument, at least this setup, this particular uh, collection of, 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 of things that you could order from Forkner, and what I liked about it is that I wanted that John Joe Kelly sound, and John Joe Kelly owns a 16x4 Matloff. I wanted to copy that, and I wanted to capture those highs, highs that I was not getting on the RWE, and I wanted to make sure that I was getting this, which is an incredibly easy to control high to mid-range and a little bit harder to control bass. So I'm still learning on it, but that's the major differences as to why I picked it up. I was lucky that Endians was selling it, and I went, there's an opportunity, and I just nabbed it up. And it beats waiting a year to get a drum made, right? So kudos to Mr. Forkner and kudos to Rolf Fogles and Christian Hedvigshack for making one of the best drums I've ever played. Certainly the most versatile drum I've ever played. You know, I, I cannot ever see myself selling this drum because of what it can do. So last quick rundown of the pluses and minuses for each of these drums. Harder attack on the RWE. Softer attack on the Metloff. Okay, so harder attack on the RWE, softer attack on the Metloff, easier to control the tones and the bass, easier to control the range of the high ends. This has a knock-knock sound at the top. This one has more of a punch at the top, so it's a little bit more harsh. Um, this is heavier. This is lighter. Both of them more or less have the same type of tuning system, same number of tuners. Um, this one flops around a bit more, this one doesn't. The mid-range, both drums have incredibly good mid-ranges, though I would say the RWE is more versatile. And this, the Metloff, is a little bit more performance-based for people who, who like to spend their time learning the fine motor skills of contouring the tom-tom sound. As far as bass goes, I think the RWE has the Metloff beat, but the control at the top the RWE just doesn't have that extra little bit of range and volume that the Matloff has, even though it's not as deep a drum. Which one do I prefer? Mm, I'm not even going to tell you that because both of these drums are getting used tonight at a Flock Y'all, and they're both going to get used on an album that I'm helping produce, so no favorites on this, and I cannot recommend one or the other. All I can say is do your homework, 
ask the makers questions. And if you are going to order something custom, do your research, talk to Rob Forkner at any length to try to get what it is that you're looking for. If you're going to go the RWE's route, go on the website, the Christian's website, talk to Rolf Boggles, talk to people who have owned it. You now have my opinion on the drum. It's fabulous. Um, and question yourself is what sort of styles do you like to play and does this drum benefit it because it's built like a tank it does not break it is just fabulously put together it's absolutely stunning to look at like that's a beautiful beautiful drum so if you go one or the other you win you pretty much win okay so have fun drumming out there if you're interested in the christian hedvig shack rwe talk to christian and rolf Vogels. um christian hedvig shack and rolf Vogels. If you're interested in getting a Metloff drum, there's going to be a bigger weight, obviously, because he's custom making drums one at a time here or thereabouts. And you have to know more about his website, the skins that are provided, and what to actually buy. So you're going to be doing more research for the Metloff drum, and there's lots of good info, and there's lots of people who use it, and you're going to be doing less research for the RWE. Last thing, there actually are sound metrics on the RWE. You can find them on Christian's website. You can even ask for him to download them to you or Rolf to give them to you. If you are a sound junkie, if you're a person who knows the the, the recording aspects and metrics of, 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 of sound on circular membranes, talk to those too. They have the actual raw data from, I believe, and hopefully Rolf, if I'm wrong, or Christian, you can t correct me on this. It is the University of Munich, correct? I hope I'm right. Anyway. Both drums are fabulous. Both of them have their strongs and weak points, but neither is a bad drum. They are both top notch. You should, you should play them if you have money to spend on them. Do it. Just do it. Um, and if you have to pick one over the other, do your homework. Till next time. Have a good one. Bye.